All right, welcome back. So we're trying something new. I'm here with Manuel Post. Yeah, and uh, this time what we've decided to do is we found a video we want to do a commentary on. I had a I had someone in in uh, one of the premiere streams uh, request a video commentary, and I started working on that. I'm actually going to do that I think separately. And what happened was in the meantime, Paul Vanderclay tweeted out this video, uh, and this video is the introduction to Game B. video was so terrifying that I said, everybody has to watch this and tell me what they think. Cause I didn't know, is it me? Right. Is it, is this real? Like, can it be this bad? And we got back some interesting answers along the lines of, yeah, this is not a good, a good thing. And so I said, well, this might be a good thing to do a commentary on. And then what happened was, so I watched it myself by myself. Manuel watched it himself by himself, right? And it came to his own independent conclusions. And we've since watched it two more times together uh, because we've uh, compiled these, uh, these notes. And so the, the reason why we care about game A and game B, roughly speaking, is that it's a thing that Jordan Hall talks about and he was talking with John Verveke and they brought it up a few times. And so since we're, you know, started as sort of Jordan Peterson, John Verveke guys, and, and we're firmly in the in the Verveke camp, we'll say that, that this is sort of relevant in the sphere. And we've had a lot of Game A, Game B people come to the John Verveke Discord server, the Awakening from the Meaning Crisis Discord server. And so we want to kind of address that. And also, these people are everywhere. I see them on Clubhouse, right? And the ideas of Game A, Game B, I don't even think they're necessarily incorrect as a descriptive map. Um, but I don't think this prescriptive or, or predictive. Um, those ideas are everywhere. And a lot of them lead to, we'll say, a particular place. And um, so what we've done is we've taken a bunch of notes. We have notes on, we'll say, the textual content, which is just reading through the transcript, which we also did in addition to watching the video at least three times, um, just reading the transcript without, without, we'll say, the enchantment of the music and the visuals, which We'll get into that. That's important, right? And then we went back and did all the visuals and the music and the the, the symbols, the little tricks uh, that that we think they're employing, and not not to impugn anyone's honor. Uh, the video, you know, was made by people, and people are moved by spirits, and sometimes they don't know what moves them. Okay, so I'm not saying like these people know exactly what they're doing. They've got this all calculated out and it's a very well-planned mechanistic thing. I, I don't believe any of that, <laughs> right? But we play out patterns and that's what the channel is all about, navigating patterns, right? We play out patterns. And so we wanna show you some of the patterns that have played out without making any claims as to whether or not they're deliberate or whether or not people that did them understood them or any of that, because this isn't about placing blame or, or, or anything. This is about arming you with tools and frameworks so that you don't get enchanted or fooled or fall into narrative capture. So right. on I, that I, note, I, go ahead, Manuel. T tell us what you well, think. I, well, I, I would add that there's maybe one intent that we can be sure about, right? Like they, they did want to enchant you, um, but that, that doesn't say anything of... of the other motivations within that enchantment. Good, right? good or bad, that, yeah. Enchantment's not not necessarily good or bad, right? So, uh, and uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so, so, so there's there's this element where we where where it's the surface level engagement that we had with with the video, right? And then when when reflecting on it and and rewatching it or, and reading the transcript, there's this there's this depth and and even like highly religious undertone in in the structure and and in in the conveyance and that in, in some senses is, is 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 unreal to to observe so so yeah on one level it's amusing but on, on the other level it's also really scary like how many things are going on and and and, and how they just get bombarded at us and and then if, if we don't take this this deep dive into it, right? Like they, they stay hidden, like, like even to us, like, like, and the fact that we have each other to, to, um, 
collectively contrast sense make. And, and, and sense make that that's also important, right? Because like when when you open one door, it's like, oh yeah, you can look at it this way. And then you see five other things <laughs> that, are, that are through the same door. So yeah, that, that's kind of like how how this came to be. And 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 well, we spent a lot of time on this, and <laughs> there was a lot of things to to get out of it. So like we're not gonna get to all of it. And that's also not the point of the video. So we want to we want to get off a little bit with the structure of the video without you having seen it, so that you can you can get a sense of of what what to expect, right? Like what is going to be presented to you, and it, it also allows you a way to to disengage from the enchantment in the moment because because you have an expectation that you can hold when watching. Yeah, well said. Yeah, and again, the point is to, to help break the enchantment. We have lots of hours in on this, and it's not just us because we get opinions from lots of people. So we're using that distributed cognition, that collective intelligence, this idea of collective sense making to help us along because <clears throat> some things are so deep uh, and, you know, whether they're intent, I don't think they're intended because it's, it's hard to see how anybody could intend all of this or even most of this. Um, but you know, we follow these patterns. And so finding these patterns is you know, an exercise that requires an intelligence larger than any, any one of us. And, and we do have a lot of help. So I just wanna highlight that. We did all spend a lot of time on it uh, and, and energy and attention. And, and that's really important to note. So why don't we just go through the note summary that we have. And uh, <clears throat> do you wanna start off Manuel or do you want me to start off? Um, well, yeah, you can go. Okay. So there's three in, in this game, a, game B uh, intro video, there's three games actually mentioned. So it, this game A, game B binary doesn't actually exist in the narrative they tell, which is sort of interesting right off the bat. It's like, well, why are you, why are you comparing two things if you're mentioning three? And I think there's a deliberate reason for that. So there's really the first game which is the referent game. It's the utopia, it's the perfection. There's game A, which is the game we're stuck in, right? And then there's uh, game, game B. The game A stops working due to population explosion, right? So I'm, I'm sorry, the first game stops working during the population explosion. Game A gets further corrupted by the fact of the population explosion. Like it emerges from this idea of too much population. And then, um, Game B is a dream. So even in the video, it's not manifest and it's not clear that it will be manifest. So they're not appealing to determinism, right? And the way they tell this story is by using three wisdoms, right? The sage, which is truth and retelling, right? The matriarch, which is life, purpose, regeneration is represented by the heart, right? And the third wisdom is the chief, which is the body and represents building. And then they're establishing a lot of these truths through uh, a historical story lens, right? Where they're using nostalgia to hijack your, your emotional uh, valence and to appeal to something, we'll call it pure, roughly speaking. And, and that's sort of, um, you know, part of the, say, overall outline of what they're doing in the moment. And th these notes are called mostly from the, the transcript, which is a very different read, by the way, from watching the video. So that, that's, where, that's, where, uh, that's where I'm getting this from. And, and that's sort of the, so say, the high level outline of, <clears throat> of, we'll say, the framing of the story. Right. So, so then one thing to note about it is that they're trees, right? So they're coming in trees and, and the trees are, are used as a thing to build the story on. Uh, they're, they're important to the story. Um, so then they, they split up the narrative between the past, present, and future, which is analogous with the game A, uh, the game, <laughs> the original game, <laughs> and the game A and the game B. Um, and they embody that spirit that is. Uh, a straw man representation of, of these aspects. So, so they're not making a, 
a coherent argument about the future. They they making a set of assertions that are are in in the spirit of the narrative that they want to convey, which which is enchanting an enchanting narrative, right? So that 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 is the the aim of of uh, the drama, and they they start off with with this this idealized state and then there's there's a regression from the noble savage like the, the purity of of being in accordance with nature in into a a society that that is uh controlled in a hierarchy and it's 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 uh it's a possession by an evil spirit called a parasite and and it's controlling all of us and um and and that that is that is the evil that that we're currently under and then they they lift you up out of the state with with their ideal the thing that that they're presenting to you and and salvation will come through a mystical invocation of the tribe of which you're a member and that the cooperation manifested through this tribe is is, is going to be based on on feeling right, like that, because they they're not giving a definition, they're they're appealing to to your capacity to to magic it into existence, and then um, that that will bring solution the solution into the world, and and then it's important that that that's based on the authority. Of, of the three sages, they, they they convey that as an authority to you. So, so you're, you're effectively having to trust them. So there is an introduction uh, of, of a scene with, with stars and, and, and they're representative of the potential. And that potential is, is then uh, harbored in the person who's who's gonna play this game and that person is 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 gonna play the role of the hero that that is gonna save us from from this bad parasite infested reality that we're in yeah <clears throat> yeah it's it's interesting right because they they end up in the video flipping right the 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 narrative of your role and the global narrative of the project itself, right? So the, the, the big goal and the history. So they're mixing in these three time frames uh, constantly. And they're basically giving you through the through the narrative, they're making you the hero in several ways, like how you get into the story, right? What happens to you once you're in the story, right? And then there the wisdoms are you know acting as 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 the ideals right and that sneaks you into participation so they're, they're sort of assuming that by watching that you're participating or you're going to, to participate in in the in their project and again there's nothing wrong with that like i'm not i'm saying I'm not trying to impugn anything right but that's what they're doing and they appeal to these ideals and this utopic vision this first game right to constrain your your direction the direction of your attention roughly speaking uh they're using evil the idea of the the perfect garden the garden of eden right and end times right so they're saying oh we got to run away from end times and towards the garden and here's what the garden looked like before and um this parasite is the demon and it's not a mere demon it's a demon that controls everything you do roughly speaking and there's no clear cause of the parasite, right? It just seems like a snake in the garden or something, right? It's just, it's just there. And uh, it it's, seems to cause and be caused by game A, which again, seems to be caused by overpopulation, roughly speaking. And there doesn't seem to be a way to excise the parasite. Um, but also the things that the parasite give us, roughly speaking, need to be capped which is an interesting twist on the enchantment, right? Because you need all the things from game A, right? Because they, they avoid 
overly demonizing game A, which is you know very very good move, uh, obviously, right? Oh, we've got a lot of good things from our technology, so let's not let's not throw throw away all the good stuff. Uh, but you you need that in order to get to game B effectively, right? So they talk about through, which which I find uh, sort of interesting. Yeah. So so then then they're, they're trying to appeal to you as as a person right so, so you're supposed to identify with with the player and then you, you wake up in the world and then you're chosen right so you're you're special and 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 they they call they call you waking up an initiation and they they afford you a symbol of recognition in 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 the way of a coin which which is a thing that affords you a status among them right like so so, so it places you a part of them but it's also a a, a remembrance it's, it's a thing that that's appealed on at the ends of 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 the of the movie where they effectively say oh like you have this sign um that that proves that it's real, right? Like that proves that you're chosen. That proves that you have the ability that to 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 manifest this utopia in the moment, right? And that proves that you you have access to the the specialness, the special skills that the three wisdoms have unlocked in you, right? And and then your your responsibility is to keep that connection open, to to keep that special. Uh, way of being informed by them, which is somewhat like mind controlled, <laughs> um, open, right? So, so they're explicitly invocating that. And um, yes, so, so in, in the end, there's also this, this, this uh, grasping for the parasite, right? But the parasite isn't, isn't the continuity between the other world and, and this world, but the continuity is is the, the connection to the sages. Um, so, so that's that's the thing that that they rely upon. Yeah, the coin, the coin that you're given in a video game, right, happens outside of the video game to to maintain the continuity and also the realness of the video game world, which is interesting. We'll go, we'll go into that more at the end. Yeah, and then there's this whole appeal. Right, because the video is set up like the Matrix, right? It's a it's a Matrix clone clone story, roughly speaking, right? There's an appeal to domicile, <clears throat> which is what the Matrix is about. Like, oh, you feel like you're in the wrong place, right? You feel like, right? And then you, right? They go through that in the Matrix, and in this, they go through the same thing, right? They 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 give the same mini mini narrative about, wow, something doesn't feel right, and and um, <clears throat> now that you're in the in the narrative as a hero you're seemingly able to resist the parasite but those three wisdoms are there guiding you roughly speaking um but you're sort of dependent upon them in some sense because they start out guiding you into the world and then in the world they're dragging you around basically um and and they're you're the, you're asking them questions and they're well in the beginning not answering the questions and then they start answering some questions it's not that they're not giving answers. They're not answering the questions. It's a different thing entirely, right? So when you're, it's good to know, like when you're asking a question and you're not getting an answer to the question you asked, that's a thing that should set bells off in your head for sure. I'm not saying it's bad. It might be fine, but it also might not be fine. And, and that's what, what you have to sort of discern for yourself. So <clears throat> they establish the authority in a, in a number of different visual ways too, but uh, and and they give you this path to be saved from the possession of the parasite, roughly speaking. Um, but they give you a lot of agency. They give you a lot of ideas of proper action and how to manifest, we'll say, the new utopia, Utopia 2.0, which is roughly speaking game B in this in this outline, because we, we came from Utopia. Right, which is you contrast to Utopia, the first game with game A, right? And, you can, and they show you this clear path, right? And then you're you you want to get back to Utopia without losing all the things you've gained, right? So you need a Utopia 
right? Because you've got to integrate. And it's this cooperation through this mysterious tribe that they reference. So they're referencing tribalism, but in a positive light. And they're saying there's a positive tribe you can be, you know, part of that will help you manifest this in cooperation with others. And this idea of proper action, roughly speaking, is a way for them to hijack your agency uh, and your power, right? Because your agency is, is to some extent your power. It's not, it's not all of your power, although all the elements needed for power are in your agency. So and that's another uh, uh, component to sort, of, to sort of keep in mind about, about the narrative and, and, and how it plays out. Right, so, so, so that's, that's the aim of the video, right? Like that's, that's what they wanna get from you. Um, so, so the authorities, they, they have uh, ways of, of connecting to you, right? Like, so this is, this is where the enchantment starts coming in in, in, in a heavy way, right? So they, they're making appeals to no nostalgic elements, right? Like the, the Eden, right? The Garden of Eden team is, uh, oh, like that was a place or a way of being that was nice and we wanna have that back. And then they're, they're presenting you with a tribe, right? So that that's granting you a level of intimate connections that you don't have in your, your, your current domiciled state. And then they're, they're also representatives of truth and fundamental principle, right? So, so, so they're inheriting the, the authority from the principle that they're representing without making clear how that connection is there, right? Like that's asserted to you. Um, so, so all of these things, they, they set up this, this empty shell of a story for you where you can project yourself into and, and, and cast yourself as the hero. Like they, they, they give you the, the ways to fantasize on, on how you would give yourself self-expression. And even, even in, in the end, right? Like they have the three sages, which are our mind, heart and, and body, right? And then they say, these, these are essential things and, and they need to be represented, right? So they, then they give you even slots, <laughs> which you can identify with in the final solution, which is <laughs> maybe a joke. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so, so that, that binds you, right? And then, and then in, in order to, to give more openness of interpretation, they, 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 enter with a, a set of paradoxes, right? So, so they, they have this idea of, of cooperation out competing competition, right? Which is like, like there's, there's <laughs> something really strange going on. Like, like are, are we, are we then cooperating or are we competing? Um, the parasite is the cause of game A, but is also caused by game A as like, how does that work? And then, and then they're, they're making this appeal to, to this natural arising solution this, this, that's going to be magic into being, but it's also taking, explicitly saying that you should take control of, of destiny. So, so it's like, like are, you, are you providing the solution or, or is this solution ineffable? Like, like wh what, what's the deal there? And then, and then they have this really strange thing, right? Where, where they say culture is effectively a psychotechnology. Well, they use the word technology, but, and and there it's it's implied that that culture is created to to solve things, right? And and then it's like cultural culture is also naturally arising, right? So like, is 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 it a strategy or is it something that that just manifests and and, and works? So, so that's a, a little bit like like the the strange contrast that, that they're they're providing you with, and it's like like why would they be doing that? Or like what 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 is to be gained there? Um, so yeah, like uh, we th we think that there's an element of of making you rely on them to to provide the solution, right? Because how, how are you going to solve that? Like you, you're, you're not going to do it, but like they, they pretend to have the solution. So you're, you're going to have to get that solution through them. Um, 
And then, yeah, so, so they, they explicitly state that, that, that the knowledge of that solution is impossible, right? So, so they're even in some sense admitting their own ignorance, but they're also implying that they have the solution at the same time, right? So that, that's another paradox, but that's, <laughs> that's a paradox on, on, on the level of their existence and, 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 and their purpose. Um, so yeah, and, and then in, in the end, that, that's all coming together in, in this technology tribe, right? And where, where the tribal nature can be manifested through technology. And then like, because technology can allow us to connect to the whole world and to many people, then magic happens. Yeah. Yeah, that tribalism appeal is everywhere. And it's very, it's sort of snuck in. Uh, it snuck into the visuals, it snuck into the, to the text. Um, it's sometimes used to highlight something bad, but also as a force for good. It's like, okay, well, I, I guess, I mean, that's true. Like it could, tribalism could be bad or good. It, it really is a, a neutral valence. Um, but it's also the solution to solve the current, current domicile problem that they, that they introduced. And <clears throat> they set up a location for you to flee with the solution which is roughly speaking called technology, right? And this idea of what the, they're sliding in the humanism, like, oh, technology allows us to be all one tribe. It's effectively one of the big messages in here. And the way it does that is by providing you with what they claim to be our intimate connections with the community. And then they, they talk about how that, it's the technology that allows the scaling to the globe. And so all of the things that would be solved if we just lived in smaller villages and say extended families can also be solved, but at a larger scale with the technology that connects us all, right? That's the pitch. So that's one of the pitches. And it's like, oh, you know, I don't know that, that intimacy works that way. Like intimacy is specific, not general. And, you know, you're confusing the general and the, and the specific there. And you know, part of the solution of, of this, you know, global humanistic vision that they're, that they're giving you, roughly speaking, is everything that's been built by not them, because most of the things of the world we didn't build, right? And no even handful of people built, we'll say, um, they may have enabled it, you know, like Ford didn't build all the cars. It, Henry Ford may have enabled cars to be sold and, and built, uh, we'll say it at scale, Sure, but he didn't build them all, right? So that's a, that's a little bit different. But they need to be put in this space called public domain. And there's lots of problems with public domain because the public domain doesn't exist in some sense, right? It has to be managed, right? The public can't manage it. Otherwise, you run into what's called the tragedy of the commons. If you're not familiar with the tragedy of the commons, you should look that up. It's, it's one of, and it's not the only one either, but it's one of many interesting dilemmas that, that, that happens when you have commonality. So the solution that has emerged over time, and it emerged, it was not planned, it was not thought about, it was not you know, directed from some human force of whatever, right, uh, nefarious intent or anything, is government. So really, the only thing that controls the public domain in all cases where the public domain is, is what we call government. Now, we can argue about different types of government and whether or not we need government, but anything that emerges as the result of the idea of public property or shared property or common property is government. Uh, and it will have all the same qualities of government, good and bad. And so their idea is central, centralization, right? They want to seize everything and then moving it towards what would be a government because there's no other, you, you either have to move it to a specific person or a group of people, which would be a corporation or a group of people that would be a government. But those are your only three options. So unless you want someone to own everything, that's a monarchy, then you could have some group of one own everything, that's a corporation, or you can have some agreed upon group of managers, that's a government, right? And so, you know, they're just ignoring the idea of, of public property and the tragedy of the commons and the fact that you can't have neutral things in the world because they need to be cared for. The agents need to care for things or they decay because entropy, it doesn't, it doesn't need a bigger, uh, 
you know, a bigger, anything bigger than that. And then this sets up why they are appeal to the first game is really just an appeal to what I like to call objective material reality as the pure ideal world, right? As a state where there's something that you can put things and they're in the public domain and they're pure forever. But that state doesn't, doesn't exist, roughly speaking. Yeah, and, and there's also the part where like you as an individual or as, as a group, like you have limited capacity to interact and when the world ho is, is wholly open for you to interact, right, you need to have the capacity to sense make within that space because it's impossible to, to have a relationship with it, right? So then your, your government would also have to have partially the function of sense making where, where they're leading the flow of information and then we get into a whole different uh, can of worms, which is which is literally the can of worms that they're complaining about, right? Like the can of worms where where there is there is this narrative, right, represented by the parasite that that is taking control of you, right? And 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 then they're basically going to superimpose a different narrative, but like someone's going to have to write that narrative. So, yeah. So if we if we look at at, at the the, the vibe that that the video is trying to convey right like they're, they're using this this idea of the, the matrix right which is for a lot of people at least in the target group like it's 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 something from the youth right and and it's 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 highly culturally relevant right because it, it also has this this element of you escaping from the mind control, right, which is which is in 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 the in in the game as well, right, and then the game is is represented in eight bit style, which is also something from the same target group, right, from their youth. So, uh, and 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 that that grounds you in into a a a certain consumer <laughs> a paradigm. So, um. And then the music that they use, they, they, they also use that to bind you in, in the video game frame and, and they use it to, to highlight importance in, 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 the, in the video, right? And they, 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 they also use it to lift you up, right? So, so they're, they're conveying this, this emotional uh, message with, with it and we'll point it out later. Um, so and then the game itself is 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 telling the story of a noble savage, right? Like so, so the, in the past everything was nice, and that's also represented in in the way that they depict that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's what we call the Garden of Eden, right? And then we get hijacked by the overpopulation, right? Like so, people cannot maintain that way of life because they get forced into a different way of life by the people who were like already in that game <laughs> way of life um and and that's that's uh, a representation of of the falling of civilization in into sin right like in, into decades and and that is then represented by the parasite and the paris the paris of the parasite traps you in a frame where their solution the solution that they're representing is the only only option, right? Like the parasite is on you, it's gonna retake control of you. And, and the only way that you can resist being recontrolled is by opening your wisdom centers to them. So, and, and, and then you were special, you were the one that was chosen, like they, they opened your wisdom centers and, and you have the responsibility to keep them open. Uh, thereby, right, like they're, they're lifting you and your agency up right like so because because they're not really saving you but you're letting them save you <laughs> which is uh, it's sometimes even even worse than being <laughs> saved um and and then yeah you you have you have this empowered self and and that allows you to act within 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 the final solution the technology tribe um that that restores intimacy right because they're they're having these three aspects right so basically they're saying well you have wisdom of the mind wisdom of the heart and wisdom of the body and 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 we've been talking about connectedness i think in previous videos right like so these if if you have all of these you have a level of connectedness right so that that's correct 
and 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 that's that's the promise that 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 they leave you with and uh, yeah and, and then then you're you're the savior of yourself in your domicile and you're also the savior of the human race by participating in in this solution so yeah i think i think that was kind of like uh, several ways of of looking at what what they were presenting to you and i hope that uh, these these ways will allow you to look at what's happening in, in a different light yeah <clears throat> yeah, and it just sort of occurred to me, Manuel, that one way to think about the government is the agreed upon authority for distributed cognition, right? Like, we all agree that these are the people that are going to do our distributed cognition and then make decisions based on that distributed cognition for the rest of us, right? It's just another submission. It's another trade-off that you have to make in order to live in a large society where there's a population but also in order to build technology, because you, you know you can't have corporations without government. It doesn't go well. Then the corporations own everything, right? So, and or, or you know the government may be a monarch. And then the corporations own everything, right? We've seen that in history too. So, and before we sort of go into the video, well, I, I want to take that right. So, oh, okay, so, go ahead. So, so they have this picture of a pyramid of, of a hierarchy, oh, right? yeah. which is which is actually the representation of government and of specialization required by the more complex structure right so 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 part of the argument that is implicit is okay we have overpopulation well the overpopulation requires more complicated interaction and the complication of the interaction requires specialization so that you can have optimization right and then you inevitably get into this hierarchy and then they're pretending that you, you can like end up in a non-hierarchical state in the end. Right. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Right. The overpopulation enables specialization that enables technology, right? So you want specialization because it enables technology, but then they want to shrink it all back down and keep the technology piece, right? And get rid of the government that, that is basically, it's not the top of the hierarchy or it shouldn't be uh, when it is, you have problems uh, and maybe, maybe, we have problems, right? So I'll, I'll make a claim there. Like maybe the idea that we're treating the government as the top of the hierarchy is the problem, it could be, uh, or, or we're trying to replace what is the rightful top of the hierarchy, that could be too, that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, you're right, they, they put it in a pyramid right for you. It's very clearly a hierarchy and then they kind of indicate that that's gotta go. And uh, and they do at the end sort of replace it with an, what appears to be a flat a flat structure, but uh, yeah, you're not keeping technology. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely not keeping technology though. And that's what they're not understanding. So yeah, I wanna go over the, um, um, we, we, did a, we did a treatment of just the visuals and the music, which was exhausting. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, the idea that, that, again, it's the matrix. So you start out as a real person, you go into an 8-bit game world, and then you come out a real person again with, a, with, a, with proof that the 8-bit game world is real and certification that you are the chosen one, roughly speaking. So whether you want to be anointed a hero or whether you thought you already were a hero, it fits both, both sides of the entry into the hero narrative, right? Or Some heroes are reluctant. Right, right. But some heroes are reluctant, right? And they're pushed into it. And in this case, you could read it that way. And some heroes are like, I know I'm, I know I can get the golden fleece, right? Or whatever. Like, I know I can, right? Uh, and, and it also caters to that. It doesn't matter. You'll read it whichever way you read it, which is interesting to note. Uh, narratives aren't one, you know, look, you got, you got to give Foucault and Derrida some credit, even though I'm loath to do so. They're not wrong about some of this. They're wrong about the cause of it. Right, but they're not wrong about some of it. The author can't understand the author's intent uh, because there's a spirit driving the author. And so when a story arises, there's lots of different messages in the story, for sure. And there's messages that the person writing the story didn't see. This is you know akin to psychological projection, although there's a different, slightly different phenomena, but it's it's the same sort of idea. So you've got this initiation in this gold with this space background, and space refers to potential, right? And it, it it invites the participation, right, in the in the pacing and the music. 
right? And then, you know, they're doing this symbolic enchantment through a new, a new icon, right? Which is a video game, roughly speaking, an explicit video game. So unlike the matrix where you go from real world to real world, in this, you go from real world to clearly something like a primitive metaverse. I, and, you know, I know it might be a stretch to say that, but that's the look they're going for deliberately. Right. So, so, so they're, they're, they're putting you in, well, a, a world in which everything is known implicitly. I think that that's important. And, and yeah, so, so we, we, we kind of missed this, this introduction because, because there's this uh, woman who sits behind the computer and she starts taking in questions and, and they weren't in the, in the transcript, right? So, so she starts asking questions and, and then what happens? She, she gets supported, right? She gets, she gets motivated to ask more questions as, as if that's a good thing, right? Like it might be good, right? If you're asking the right questions and if the answers are, are leading you somewhere, um, but but it's it's implied that that the asking of the questions makes her special, right? And, and and it is actually the thing that allows her to get accepted within the game. And and then there's this this element where she has to to commit to accepting participating in game B without knowing what game B is, right? So, so there's this this moment of choice which she actually navigates away from the choice. And then, then there's this enthusiasm, right? Like this, there's this engendering of this positive spirit, this, this spirit of change that allows her to, to bind herself to this new destiny. Oh yeah, and, and it's important that that all the questions that are being asked are related to domicile, right? So, so, so there, you, you, you get, you, you get to identify in a specific way with with this person, right? And, and especially because the target group is is supposed to be the the nuns, right? Like the people who who lost their home in in religion, and 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 they want to have a new way to to participate in the world. Yeah, and definitely important. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And you know, you're popping into this game. And the first thing that's that that's happening basically is there's more stars. So we're back to the potential. So it's the potential in the beginning. And then you pop into the epic game and there's the stars and the potential again. And they they've cast the main character as a human initially in the role of Socrates, deliberately invoking a sage, invoking the sense of curiosity. Right. And those questions are not answered directly. Right. But they're encouraged. So the, the, the additional question is, is encouraged because when you when you're in that mode of wonder, which when you engage with this video, you're in the mode of wonder. Right. And, and so fair enough, they're dragging you along along in that rather deliberately. And, and the authority you know, says that this is all good and that it all makes sense, right? And the authorities sort of appear above you, right? And, and, and they, they give you this whole continuity. So it stars, you pop in, it stars, right? So that, that there's this continuity there. And they, they start offering this alternative right off the bat, right? Through characters looking down at you as authority and they're shining, right? They're shining characters. They're, they're calling out to you, right? So they called out to you from inside this ultimate reality, roughly speaking, right? And when you get there, they call out to you again, right? By presenting themselves. And the stars are covered up by them. So they, they very much like represent that whole ethos. 
Right, the coming down of the potential. Um, right, right. The, the ideals manifest and, and what they, they're, they're literally going to say that, that they're, they're the ideals. So, so it's, it's, it's important to, to realize, right? So, so the characters on, on the back looking up, right? So, so, so there's, there's an element of lifting up, right? And then a while later, they're going to introduce the parasite as well, right? From which you're, you're disconnected, right? So that you have clear vision, right? So, so there's all of this, th these aspects where, where they're the ones that, that are putting you in right relationship, which, which is to be fair, right? Like that's what, what, what they're supposed to be doing, right? Like they're putting you in re right relationship with, with with the world right and then then again right like so there's there's a bunch of questions by the main character and the main character does not get answers to the questions but she she does get answers so so now we're we're in a a, a new relationship right like now now there there's answers provided but it's not the answers that that are asked and 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 then in in some sense that that is that is initiating the transformation from those wisdom centers into you, right? It's like, okay, like you're not looking at the world in the right way. We have the right way and, and we're going to provide it for you and don't rely on yourself because you have that damn parasite gnawing it. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are good points. Yeah. And then they, they start making the reference to game B within that, within that narrative framework. So, they're pretending like initially you're questioning and curious and that, that draws you in. And then they're setting up very deliberately another narrative, right? So it's this wrapped narrative idea. That's what the matrix story is, roughly speaking, right? And they're initiating you into the world as a player, right? With a, 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 an urgency call, roughly, right? From a deep voiced, authoritative sounding figure, right? So these are important sort of symbolic ways that they're forcing the narrative onto the viewer, right? Because again, they drag the viewer in because the person in the movie was a viewer and then they got dragged in. And so that, that just trains your attention on the fact that you too could get dragged in or are dragged in, right? And so it's very much wrapping the story is very, very deliberate uh, uh, in that. And then there's these invocations made um, out of a sense of caring by a female authority that they have to hurry because the parasite, roughly speaking, is, is going to take over, right? Or, or could wake up or something. It's, it's a little vague on how the parasite actually works, which again is an interesting, interesting uh, fact of the video. So yeah, and and they're using a lot of the music with this and, and doing a lot of, uh, of scene changes. Yeah, so, so do we want to have, have that depicted for, for the audience maybe? Uh... Yeah, we can, we can do that. We can show some of the, uh, some of the scenes real quick. Um, let me... Right, and so you can see the, the, the start is just on the questions. Right. But then what happens is they're popping into a world, right, with this scene. And it doesn't start this way. It starts with just the clouds. And then the three characters appear, right, out of pretty much nowhere. And 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 that's that's the problem, is that it's it's moving through this, you know, this worldview. Right. This this idealized, this is the first game sort of worldview where you've got this. This, there's woolly mammoths and there's people living together, right? And the, and the invocation is towards, you know, you're temporarily free, right? There's, a, there's, there's humanity and technology and nature all right in the scene. And the, the technology here is roughly what they're carrying, right? So in video games, you might carry a magical item. Everyone here has a magical item. And there's music in the background. It's sort of tricky to see, right? But there's music by the village. They're playing music next to the dangerous woolly mammoths, <laughs> which, uh, right. you know, I find that. There's, there's a sense of harmony represented by the, the, 
the music and, and the fact that there's these dangerous animals so close. And then and then the thing that just like blew my mind is, is like there's this cave next to the village, right? There's this implication yes. that that they came out of the cave, right, from darkness into light, and, and now we're 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 in this kumbaya harmony thing and, and 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 we're having paradise right like like they're, they're literally going into the fact that 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 there was this relationship with with nature which is renewal cycle and and like there's there's no um no consumption or, or parasitic relationship of human onto nature no there was there was this harmony and 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 so that's that's the thing that's being invoked here in in, in image and then with, with music, and and then also the the narrative that that these these people are are going to present. Right. Yeah. And they do a really good job of <clears throat> mentioning to you that you're going to be the first of the new the new sort of tribe, right? And then that you know they're giving forth this this crazy narrative, um, and they're invoking magic here explicitly, right? And you can see the the magical you know, power there come up and, and that's sort of, you know, supposed to, that's what gets represented on the coin, roughly speaking too, right? It's supposed to be the thing that, that ties the narrative in activity together, right? So you have a very static, static screen, static narrative. It's all tied together in this, in this, uh, in this symbol. And again, each of the sages has, has mystical items, right? Or, or technology, technological items. Um, and then they they move through this explanation of this utopia, right? And how it endured for a hundred thousand years. Everybody lived like this with woolly mammoths. You know, none of them got killed off or anything, uh, right? Uh, only good things happened, right? They they ignore all the all the bad things uh, and just pretend like, well, that's really what the first game was was you know all about. And you know, your you know, we'll say. Uh, your parasite that's weakening you uh, didn't exist back then, right? Because everybody did, you know, again, we don't know where it comes from. They don't, I don't think they explain that at all. Um, but the, the, the culture is the thing that is the quote technology that, that solves a problem, which, you know, that's part of the, the framing of this whole thing. And they're invoking all of these, um, all of these ways of being like regeneration, um, which is good, but you know, the problem with, with uh, the problem with re uh, uh, regeneration is it pretty much breaks the first law of thermodynamics, right? Because this idea that things just perpetuate magically with no loss. And, and again, entropy, we live in a world with entropy. So that's, that's not going to happen. And they, they do this whole idea of needing everybody together in this stewardship thing, which roughly speaking is, a call to empathy, right? Stewardship is, oh, you're responsible for your fellow human being thing. It's the same old tired, uh, in my opinion, humanistic uh, argument that they, they made in the 1920s and, and, and before and, and slightly after, right? Um, th this, is, this is what the great despots built their empires upon, is this idea of, of uh, this humanistic idea, roughly speaking, need, so, needing so everybody. We, we might want to show the, the parasite framework. They <laughs> put this parasite like, hugely on on the screen to i think it's a little bit back to is it that? i don't think it's in back of that yeah. no, I, I think it's where do you think it is exactly because i didn't think it was back here i i don't think they've even talked about the parasite yet oh there it is you're right yeah you can see it on them so, so, zoom in so, on it and and, and, it, and it's pulsing and so, so, so they, they, they throw this really in your face and i think that that's that's important right so 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 this is this is the setup right so you're you're in this world right like there's there's all of these elements that 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 are put in relationship to each other and and this this is the starting point this is this is where we we start from and and then they they, they start swapping into the next chapter which is like uh, seven something minutes in, I think. yeah it's it's uh Maybe six minutes in 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. This this is a little bit more advanced, right? But this is still a game. No, this is the next. Uh, um, that's no, the no, next scene just... change. Yeah. This is the okay. this is the next scene after the after the first yeah, but, one. But this yeah, but this is still the primal game, All right? So so here there there there. This is where they're talking about the relationship to nature, right? And that the technology is attuned to to the world that they're living in, right? So, so, so there's this this element of integration that that's really highlighted in in the relationship, and and then there's the symbol of the tree that that they they point out there, right? Which is which is then uh, what's it's basically the cycle of life of the tree that where it's like uh, going into life, bearing fruit, dying, and then that that is that is that is how things are supposed to happen right like that's that's the correct cycle and then that is connected to to the magical symbol that is uh that is was was in the air in in the previous scene and that is going to be Im imprinted on the coin as well which is uh conveyed in in this scene to uh, to the main character to to initiate her as part of the the people who know, the people who are aware. right, 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 and then it flips to this idea. To this is the chapter on um, game A itself, right? So you you have a little bit of say technological development in the last you know in the in the description of the first game, and then they flip to this, which is basically you know a standard. Uh, a board game thing, right? That you'd find in Catan or or uh, Civilization, right? Uh, games like that. And this is where they start explaining the tribalism. So there's no tribalism in the first game, and then this tribalism sort of arrives, you know, as a it's it's presented as a as a as a problem, right? And there's this rise in the musical tempo, right? And and so they're giving you this sense of motion through through the music, right? And then they're they're sort of the, the the reason why they do this is to modify this board, and they modify the board slightly by flipping the things over to show the overcrowding, and that's what shows up here is all of this uh, ridiculous overcrowding, right? And 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 then they you know, they continue through time and they show an actual, you know, we would recognize as a, as a city city, right? And this is just a natural progression. The things that don't change though are the characters in the game, right? So they're really playing with narrative framing, right? The, the characters are in a frame and what they're doing is moving the frame around the characters and keeping the characters the same. And again, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just pointing out that's what they're doing. And so, they're standing on a high place where they have overview of the situation, right? So there's all, right. all these implications in, in how these characters have a relationship to what's going on around them. Yeah, exactly. And you notice they start out in a high place, they go to a, an even place with the village, and now they're back on a high place again, judging. So if you want to do the U-shaped story structure, which, you know, I've, I've got my issues with, but it's better than nothing. And then, you know, what happens is they sort of progress through this, is there's that 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 pyramid that you love, Manuel, that you love. Yeah, so, so, so this is the hierarchy. And, and it's it's really funny because because what they're doing is they're, they're coming into the pyramid from bottom up, right? So, so usually when when you deal with anything you start with the most important first right but that's that's not the message that they want to convey right it's like you want to say okay look look at here here's all these poor farmers and slaves and look at all those people above them right like that's the message that they convey when when you're going from bottom up instead of from the pharaoh down and um, and it, yeah well like we, we had some criticisms about maybe things not being in the right place and um but but yeah, like the point that we made, right? Like there's there's this necessity, right? Like so all of these things, right? Like they're distinguished by the role that they fulfill in society. And the role that is higher upon the pyramid is the role that is more difficult, 
right? Like it, it requires more of the person, right? Which would be uh, normal for any hierarchy, right? So, so it's, it, it's deemed to be bad, but from my perspective, unavoidable. Yeah, and also you're right. The, 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 the trick really is you mentioned the most important thing first. And the thing they mentioned first are farmers and slaves, right? And then they go through this, this thing that's supposed to represent, say, the number of things and the and their quote cast importance in society. I would argue they got that totally wrong. Like they just just, just wrong. Um, but they don't recognize. And maybe one good way to think about this is the perspective of farmers and quote slaves. Which, by the way, they didn't have in Egypt. I know contentious argument. No, they didn't. They believed in ma'at. Uh, you can look up ma'at. Double A M Double A T. Um, <clears throat> they farmers have to tend the land. They have to care about when the sun comes up, when the sun goes down, what the moisture is. <laughs> they have to prepare for the weather, right? So they have a certain framing that they have to uh, conform to. That type of knowledge, the knowledge we'll say of being in harmony with nature, that that way of understanding the world is not available to everybody. Right. It's not available to everybody. Not everybody can be a farmer. Not everybody can be a good farmer. And farmers also need helpers who are just going to take their word for it when they say, no, 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 water this today, but not tomorrow. And the person doesn't understand because they're not used to watering it every day. But fair enough. Like, but maybe you listen to the expert farmer in that case. So you can see there's hierarchies within these hierarchies. And the things the pharaoh pays attention to are more global in scope, if you will, right? They're like you have to make decisions at the level of how can I do, get something done that needs to be done for the majority while hurting the least number of people? Because that's what leaders do, right? They make trade-off decisions at a layer of reality that doesn't treat people like people. Yes, but I would argue that's unavoidable. And so when you don't recognize that that's true for every single, and I would argue this is a bad caste system that's out of order and wrong, even for ancient Egypt, but that's a different argument, right? When you have that, you know, that sense that there's different perspectives. So for example, what does it take to, uh, to run three farms instead of just one? It's a different skill set entirely. Like management is a different skill set and not everybody can have it. And you can't just teach it to people. In fact, teaching management to people usually ends poorly. So it's really, in a way, an invalid way to, to, to look at this. And, you know, again, the music plays a big, a big role here. Um, and and they, keep, they keep kind of switching up, right? So we go from, from that, roughly speaking, into this uh, back to the board, right? Only... <clears throat> And this is where war starts. Well, and you can, you can see, see the background behind the map as well, right? Like right. Lava, fire. Right. They're very much trying to emphasize that behind the map is this, is this war. And they... Right. Yeah, go ahead. And, 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 and then they have this idea of, okay, so, so now there's this new game, right? And then everybody's converted to the game or killed, right? Like that, like... We're now in, in, in a new paradigm and there's new rules and the previous way of being is, is inaccessible. So, so there, there's this invocation of, of this transition and the in, inability to, to go back um, and, and the inevitability of war as a consequence of living together. And, that, and then they go into this amazing, or they, they zoom in actually on, on the mountain going into, into it, right? Which, which is a reference to, to resource gathering, right? Like, because they need resources to maintain uh, the, their, their society, but also, right? Like we had the cave at the first scene, right? So, so now we're back into the cave, right? Like we're back into the, to the unconscious, we're back into the realm of the demonic, right? Like, like the darkness, and and then there's these 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 effectively slave workers who are molesting the land that cannot support them forever because they 
they're, they're removing resources from from the system as opposed to having this harmonious relationship. So, so you can you can see the redness, right? Like like which which is in relation to the war, right? Like it's inv invoking hell. It like the inability to see clearly, like all of these things are are, are in there. Yeah, yeah, it's really sort of amazing uh, how well they do the imagery, and then they pop back out of this whole thing back to the same place you were before, except it's on fire. Everything's broken and there's dead animals in the field. <laughs> it's like, wow, but it's the same, right? And there's, you know, there's these little 8-bit animations rolling. But again, the, the music keeps getting heightened up in tempo this whole time to show this progression, because progression is a very big part of this. This idea of progress, of continual progress is sort of all over this thing. And there's this sense of despair in the voiceover. It, we can't return to the first game. We can't do it, right? And it's not explained why. It's just stated axiomatically. And again, you need to state axioms. So I'm not demonizing the axiom, but mind your axioms. When people just state stuff axiomatically, give it a little note in your head. Oh, okay. Did they actually prove their point or, you know, whatever. It's, it's, worth, it's worth knowing. And that, you know, that, that, that whole sequence, this whole appeal to progress as such and showing the progress as the narrative, right? So in other words, what I mean is they're showing the movement of these things, which in many cases didn't happen this way, right? Because there's a cycle of war and no war and war and no war over and over again in history. So history is much more rich and interesting than this. And the wars aren't for say resource reasons, right? Or maybe, maybe, they're always for resource reasons, but you're, you have to expand your idea of what a resource is, right? Because sometimes a resource is ego, because sometimes the conqueror just wants to conquer to have more land, not because they need more land in any way, shape, or form, say materially. And, and this sort of flattens that out and makes the primary mover for everything in the narrative progress, this idea of progress. And it's appealing to archetypal progress, because I would argue that there's ways in which progress, and some people do this, is going back to farming, right? And this is a famous uh, argument between a couple of founders of the United States. Do you want to have a farming society? Do we have a technological society? And uh, yeah, that's a debate that's obviously, yeah, sort of still going on today to some extent, right? Is what what kind of society do we actually, you know, want to have ultimately? Well, and, so, yeah, yeah, so, so, so they, pop, they make... pop to this. <laughs> Yeah, they, they made this argument about being in the cradle of civilization, right? So I, th I think they're they're talking about the Nile Delta, and every scene is supposed to be a a representation of of that place, right? And and then right, like Mark was talking about this archetypical structure that they were conveying, right? But but there's also a sense of inevitability of the archetype playing out in this specific way that is also conveyed right and now it's 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 pretty good that they get into this modern place which is also game a where there's no war right and, and they even have like gardens on rooftops right so like like it's not that bad but but and 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 there's there's even this this element of of the preservation of history like the pyramids in in the background um, but yeah, like like now 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 they're standing. Okay, we're, we're out of history, right? Like we now have a problem formulation. We have game game zero or whatever the original game, which which isn't an option, and game A isn't an option because it's self terminating because of resources, stronger technology. Like it's 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 just gonna explode, and um. um yeah, so, so there in in this point, right, like you can identify with the hero again, right? Because it's in, in, in our current time and, and they're gonna bestow powers upon the hero, right? So, so this is where where they're they have like the second level of initiation in, in some sense, right? Where where you're getting privy to the capacity for the solution, and, and that solution is then introduced in, in the, the game B side of the equation. 
Right, right. And so then they jump to this whole game B chapter. <clears throat> and this is what they do. They sort of descend from where they were. They're still on a mountain. They're on the side of the mountain, right? Overlooking this, you know, flying car future with instead of gardens on the roofs, there's gardens on the walls, right? On the outside walls of everything too. So it's, you know, there's domes, there's waterfalls, right? And, you know, you're, you're basically uh, uh, living in this, in this realm of, of uh, nature, man, although they don't really show man here, which is kind of interesting, right? And technology sort of being in this synergistic, harmonious uh, uh, relationship uh, with, with one another. And, you know, they talk about, about all of those, you know, from the bestowing, and then they switch into, like, the, say, the fully formed, idealistic, non-manifest. They, they make this explicit that it's not a manifest world, right, that looks like this. Yeah, so can you go a little bit further than they zoom out? So, so I think they start to zoom out from the, from the uh, mountain even. But, but yeah, so, so, so there's, there's this place, right, which, which has this integration of nature, uh, technology, and humans, right? And then, and then there's ways of participating. So you have, you have the yoga on the left, and you have the children playing on, on the bottom left. And then on the bottom right, there's, there's, there's a more uh, participatory way of playing where technology is introduced. And in the center, there's, there's the education. And then you even see people doing research, right? So, so there's there's this element where where they they're um, they're reinvoking these three sages, but then through through people, right? And 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 how that should work, and and it's it's all idyllic, and 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 they're at this point they're also starting. Uh, to use fancy words like like biodomes and 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 uh, mesh networks and 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 then <laughs> they 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 do this uh, strange move where, where they where they basically drop you into well what is this mark yeah they, this is they they <laughs> just isolate you in the middle of this idyllic vision and you know, you can, you can see that you've got the parasite and then they sort of shrink you down. And then everything bursts into this, this new area, right? This new space. And then it, it's very much a, um, a, what would you call a creation narrative, right? A creation narrative. So all of this stuff starts to, to kind of happen and then everything coalesces and then boom, you're floating in space. It's like, space yay right you're just kind of hanging out there and there's all this happy music you know building up and you know they they, they say explicitly it's incomprehensible the work to achieve this is incomprehensible well the nice thing about them saying this all along is that this is too hard or we can't really tell you what the vision is like is that they're not giving you an answer What's it going to take to do this? It's incomprehensible. Okay. But have you considered that if something is incomprehensible to you, that maybe you shouldn't try to, in it, to make it happen because maybe it can't happen. So, you know, and, and look, like sometimes you have to appeal to, well, I don't know, it's, it's, it's too hard, but we've got to try. I totally get that. But it's mysterious that throughout they refuse to define what game B actually looks like or how any of it works or how you can actually do it, right? They just say, hey, you find your tribe because you'll know it when you see it, right? That's, that's, it's a lot of hand-waving. And oh, by the way, we don't know how long it's gonna take or what it's gonna take. But we do know all the stuff needs to be put in the public domain, that we know for sure. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Who's running the public domain, right? So again, it's back to, and you, know, you see again, the space theme again, right? And it's back to incomprehensibility. And, and then, um, you know, we flip out again. And well, let me, let me do this first. There we go. So we're back out into the real world. 
yeah so 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 there's this girl who we started off with and she's like wake waking up literally in 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 the world and she's like wow what just happened right like she's she's trying to sense make right and then first thing that she's reacting to is 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 the threat right like the parasite like this this thing right so she's trying to to grasp the parasite in her back and like that's also the place where where the first shot is on 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 her neck right so so there's all of this implication but it isn't there right like the parasite isn't there which well you, you could start asking questions right like okay <laughs> what, what is that about but then in, instead of having that parasite be be the thing the affirmation of of her experience she gets the coin right and the coin the coin is her connection uh to to the sages right like you have the symbol on on the coin and 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 it 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 is it is the continuity between the state of 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 the game world and 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 the real world and then the potential that she's going to manifest as as the consequence of of being the hero of the story right like the thing that she accepted on the screen at the start but now she has full knowledge of of what that entails although we kind of refuted that that knowledge is actually there but like that that is the message that's being conveyed um and then yeah like so so then we go into this last final screen and uh yeah but find find the others and they give you a website so that you can find ostensibly the technology tribe that they mentioned although i don't think they call it the technology tribe that's sort of a name that, that we're we're coming up with here but no 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 i think they did <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, but but the idea that we need that technology and and all that, and you've got to find the others, right? You've got to find the people that are like you to get together. In look, at the end of the day, what they're talking about is a religion, right? It's a set of beliefs that we all agree to and agree to operate as if they're true, right? And so they're actual beliefs, and and that's what they're saying is find the other people with the actual beliefs that we've outlined. And the problems that we've highlighted here are there's a lot of humanism in this and humanism has been used before for appeals for people to get together and do things. And that hasn't ended well yet. And I don't anticipate it ending well ever for technical reasons. Um, but that's, you know, this is the end of the, of the video and then they roll credits and it's very persuasive. It's very persuasive. And when I first watched it, um, you know, effectively what, what, you know, what happened from my perspective is every alarm bell about every, you know, dangerous thing, thing with, with, with a lot of, uh, we'll say, influence uh, went off in my head. Every single one. I was like, wow, they've just employed the whole kit and caboodle here to, to, to move people in a direction. And things that set me off are not things like narrative capture. Narrative capture does not set me off. What sets me off is narrative capture with no content, right? So if you say something like, we're gonna manifest game B and we can't define it and we don't know how long it'll take and we don't know what we need, but we need you. That sets me off because there's nothing I can do there. I can't, I know I can't participate, right? Anytime you tell me I'm a hero and you appeal to authority to prove that, that sets me off. I'm not saying it's not true. Of course, I'm the hero, that's a different different issue, right? But, but you got to prove it, right? Or, you, or I have to have that proof validated by me, not just told by you. And, and that's, that's sort of, you know, part of my framing for sort of fixing or, or noticing these things is, is that kind of contrast, right? I don't, I don't want, just want to be told something. I also want to be able to participate in the thing that I'm told. If I can't participate in the thing that I'm told, then I go, I take a different tack to it. I don't not do it. Right, but I take a different tack to it. So, what did you think, Manuel? What, what thoughts did you have watching this video for the first time? Well, when I was watching it for the first time, it, I, I was really, really shocked by, by the things that they they were trying to push in 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 my face, um, and and like we we've been keeping pointing out like the the appeals 
but but the lack of content, right? So there, there's a bunch of appeals and, and there's a bunch of structure, right? And then there's implications within the structure, but they're not ex made explicit, right? So, so, so it, it's, it's in, in some sense, they're not even doing anything necessarily wrong, but what they're doing is they're creating the space for you to make the mistake yourself. And, and then like that. that 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 also absolves them from responsibility. Um, like so, so there's there's a whole bunch of stuff going on there, right? And I think at the end there's there's this this okay. So so there's there's these these three aspects that need to be in a community, and um, and with the implication that everybody can be uh, self-expressing themselves in that community in a valuable way, right? So that's, that's implication one. And then the second implication is, is the relationship between these groups, right? Like, because we were talking about this religion idea that, that okay, like you, you're, you're supposed to effectively buy into a set of religious ideals, right? But then there's also this, this maintenance of individuality. And then, then there's this implication that all of these individuals have the capacity to cooperate while maintaining their individuality. And like, like that's not going to happen. Like that's not a thing that we want to happen because like that's like, if you don't have to cooperate, like don't cooperate. <laughs> like, um, so, 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 so there, there's, there's, there's all of these, these, well, if you think about it for a second, you're going to end up in this problem and and they they never think about it they they don't invite you to think about it although they pretend to invite you to think at the start but like then they force feed you a whole narrative right so there's that there's there's that contrast as well right so there's the, the subversive element of all of these things is 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 just calling out to me and 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 then then there's all of this, well, flat out false or or um, suggestive framing, right? Like so, so when when you're going up a hierarchy from the bottom and the hierarchy isn't organized correctly and whatever, like like what are you doing, right? Like like what's going on there? Like that's that's not okay, and 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 telling you that there's only one solution to game A, which is game B, right? And then leaving out like a whole dimension, which we've been focused on, which is the religious dimension, which is actually the thing that they're effectively invoking, making a religion, right? So, 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 so there's, there's this implication that religion is the solution, but then they're not, they're never mentioning religion at all, right? Although they're trying to represent the religious aspect through the sages, which are these divine characters that that guide you, right? But but they they're implied to be grounded, right? Because they have these these um, these ethnic connections to to these wisdom traditions, and they have uh, connections to the philosophical uh, structures that, that, that they're representing, right? So, so, so there, there, there is all this implicit, unrecognized connections, and, and, and when people make those things, right? Like, so, so basically what they're doing is they're trying to own something that exists within a context, and then they're disowning the context, and like yes. when that happens, you have to you have to be worried, right? Like yeah. then manipulation is happening. Yes, right. No, that's a good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, the crystals, right? They all have a scepter or a magic thing floating behind them, or you know, some some like a, a, you know, light halo, right? There's all these religious intonations uh in there and I, I i i like the way you frame that like when there's framing being put around something that people aren't taking responsibility for right they're not leading right then there's a problem and yeah you know i i i, I see this more clearly now that you that, that, that you said that right that there's definitely a way in which they are doing things and not taking responsibility. So they're leading you a place and not stating, no, no, we're leading you to this place, 
right? So if, if game B doesn't work out, well, it's incomprehensible. So it's not our fault that you got involved in this technology tribe and then it didn't work out because we didn't really tell you it would work out. So, you know, and, and that's anti-aspirational in some sense, right? But again, you're, you're giving them their agency, you're giving them too much agency and saying, you have to take care of this yourself, even though we know it's incomprehensible. Really? Like, that's paradoxical, that's dangerous. And, and again, it, it, you know, they're appealing to religion without making a religious appeal, right? Because they're doing it through symbols and through the music and through the, and through the, you know, the statement of ideals and, and they're using progress, the time progress and, and the idea of technology as progress. Uh, which I very much disagree with, but you know they're using those ideas and making those constant. Like these are the benchmarks. So you're measuring against those automatically. Do you realize it or not? Right. The same way they're using the first game to measure game A and game B. So we've got the first game, which is utopic, and we're we're measuring the difference between game A and game B using a relativistic framework against the utopic vision that never existed. By the way, a historical utopic vision that is totally completely full of it, right? You'd have to deny things like the rapid uh, depopulation of Neanderthals to believe that when there were woolly mammoths around that we were living in harmony. Like that's absurd. Uh, you know, it, it, people fight for lots of reasons and resources aren't those reasons. Uh, not never, but they're probably less than a third of the time. If you look in history, you take it really, really seriously. And I think it's that deep irresponsibility. We don't we don't want to lead people because, you know, leaders in the past have been bad and we don't want to get corrupted by, quote, power. Uh, you know, see my video on power. I have a different definition. Right. But fair enough. Uh, but, you know, we also we also don't want to make any promises. And you can't. It's irresponsible to make promises if you're not leading. Right. Ooh, so we're not going to do that. But now there's no aspiration either. Right. And so they're, they're giving you a vision and telling you other visions incomprehensible or it's hard or it may not manifest. No, fair enough. But why do I want to get involved with something that may not manifest? I'd, I'd rather be told a, a quote, noble lie and try to manifest it than, than to be told this may not manifest and, and not have a leadership behind it. Um, that's just me personally. Right. Again, I like things I participate in. So if you come to me and you say, I have a, I have a great idea and I go, great, how can I help? And you don't tell me. I mean, I'll, I'll listen to your idea and I'll try to encourage you, but I can't participate. So I'm not going to do anything. All right. I need to be told how I, you know, how do you want to participate? Because there's, maybe there's lots of ways I can participate, or maybe there's only one that I don't know about. I have no idea. And also participation is a negotiation between people. Like you can't just start participating any way you want. And that's why you need leadership. Like this is the value of having leaders is that they work these things out and they don't work them out perfectly because you can't, right? But they do work them out and having them worked out is better than not having them worked out. And, and yeah, that's really important. So yeah, any uh, any closing thoughts before we uh, shut this down? Well, yeah, so, so then the other, the other aspect is the sense of urgency that they're invoking. Mm. So they're invoking the sense of urgency with to the parasite, but they're also invoking the sense of urgency to the unsustainability of civilization, right? Which is also just stated axiomatically, like, okay, like that, like, whatever, like, so, 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 so what, what is, what does the sense of urgency do, right? Like, and, and the music. The sense of right. urgency yeah, in yeah. music too. Yeah. So, so there's a conveyance of of importance, right? But but there, there's also this this uh, sense of uh, removing the opportunity for decision by you because th there's on, only one way out, right? Like 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 they're, they're removing the optionality and and the ability of you to engage within. Uh, the proposition that they made because urgency supersedes skepticism. Yeah, no, that's good. Urgency supersedes skepticism. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it, the urgency shuts off your ability to do critical thinking, right? And so, yeah, and that's part of the framing throughout is, you know, there's at least three or four ways in which they're invoking urgency, urgency with the parasite, the urgency with the, with the, the uh, meta crisis, as they're calling it, which I, I think is a garbage category. Um, and they're, they're, um, of course, I don't like the word meta at all, ever. I'm always suspicious when people use it. Some, sometimes it's appropriate, but almost never, um, you know, and, 
and that idea of progress and not losing the progress. We don't want to lose that progress, man. We made a lot of progress in the game. Maybe we don't want to lose it, right? And it's like, well, yeah, you don't want to give up all the cool stuff you have to get what you really want. So how badly do you really want it? If you're not willing to sacrifice any anything that you have today, and they're not, right? All the sacrifice is by the people who hold the technology and need to give it up to the public domain. There's no sacrifice from you. So what's the value? Like if you're not sacrificing anything to get the thing that you want, is the thing that you want something that has any value? I'm not making a claim here, but like kind of think about that for a bit, right? What is the relationship of the thing that you want and value? And if you want value A and value B conflicts with value A, but you have value B, like how much value B do you give up to get value A? It, it, it probably doesn't have to be all of it, but it probably has to be some of it, right? And they, they're very much not dealing with these conflicts, with these you know, trade-offs, these decisions that have to be made. And you're right, they're removing the idea of decision, right, through skepticism uh, by invoking urgency. And that's very suspicious. That's very suspicious to me. I don't, I don't like that. Like, oh, we have to act today, right now. We can't stop and think about these things. You know, and look, fair enough. Sometimes people spend 10 years trying to figure out where to put a road when it's a 10 minute decision. I get it. But these aren't easy problems to solve either. You can't just say, oh, all roads can be decided on in 10 minutes because that's not true, right? Um, you always have to add the nuance and be curious and, and add all that stuff in because I think it's actually super important. Right. So, and, and, and maybe we can flip it around, right? So if, if they'd have a good argument, right? And, and they, 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 they trust that argument, like why wouldn't they present you with the argument? Mm. Right? Like it, it, it's, it's not that, that the concepts that were dealt with were, were that low level, right? Like they, they're talking about mesh networks and, and like fungi networks in, in the earth, right? Like, so, so, so they are appealing to, the, to, to fairly intelligent, aware people, right? And, and then if you have a good argument, like, like, why don't you trust the argument? Like, why don't you mm. lead with the argument? And when people don't do that, like, like what's going on? Like that, then they're in manipulation territory immediately, right? Yeah. Because they're appealing on, on their ability to convince you, to convince you as opposed to the truth of, of, of their project. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, the we'll say that consistency, reliability, accuracy, and precision of their model, right, would be something you could rely on independently or intersubjectively. And they're not appealing to those things. They're appealing to emotional valence. They're appealing to your raw emotions, right? They're using the framing very deliberately to lock you out of critical thinking mode, right? And that's what timelines. Uh, like progressivism and technology and the idea of progress, technology as progress do. They lock you into uh, not being critical about the technology. It's like, you know, a lot of people make this argument, right? They say, well, yeah, though Twitter's definitely a dumpster fire or whatever, right? And bad and, and whatever. But if we build a new Twitter and we use the technology to constrain people so that they can't act out the dumpster fire, then everything will be fine forgetting that they just made the argument that Twitter, who was done by a, you know, look, Jack Dorsey's got a utopic vision. Good for him. He's an idealist. Um, he never intended any of that to happen. He said, states that explicitly. It's like, well, Twitter already tried that and it failed. And you want to do it again, expecting different yeah, results. I, I, think, I think I have a solution. I think we need to limit the amount of characters that people can use to make a mess so there will be less mess. Yes, that's an excellent argument. <laughs> Right. And it's just foolishness. So the solution to too much technology, according to these people, is more technology. It's like, I don't, I don't find that convincing. I mean, maybe there's a magic technology that you're referring to, and that's what you think is going to happen. But, me, but state that, right? Don't, don't make an argument that sounds an awful lot like, well, yeah, technology is a problem and these social media sites are terrible and, and all of this stuff has gone horribly wrong and, you know, you know, it's evil Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, which certainly isn't the case, although he's got his issues, believe me, and I'm not a particular fan, but like he's not 
he, he didn't he didn't set out to build what Facebook became. That's for sure. That's kind of explicit. And who he became. <laughs> when, and what oh good point. And what he became as a result. Yeah. None of none of that was intended. Uh it's it's a spirit, spirit that happened. But if your argument is we need more of that or a different one of those, I am unconvinced. I will remain unconvinced. I will remain unconvinced long after I'm dead. That just doesn't logically follow, right? We're just breaking Arist Aristotelian logic completely. And look, you're welcome to propose something that's not Aristotelian logic to like resolve it, but propose it, right? Okay, I'm, I'm cool with Aristotelian logic isn't sufficient and therefore we need to understand it this way, but you now you have to make that case. And I'm perfectly happy to hear that, but uh, that wasn't made here for sure. And mysteriously, it's never made in any of these things that I can find. Uh, you know, Daniel Dennett doesn't make those sorts of cases either, right? He just rah, rah, humanity now, humanity forever, one big community, blah, blah, blah. No, it doesn't work that way, right? And he, you, you end up quoting certain uh, nefarious historical actors from the past, uh, you know, without realizing it, like Daniel Dennett well, does, actually. Or, so, or enacting the patterns of our argumentation or... Yeah, like, right. That there's there's many ways that that you can follow in people's footsteps without realizing it, and then yes, like like Mark Zuckerberg, you you're on your journey, and then like like when are you gonna hop off the train? Uh, are you gonna right. hop off the train? So so yeah, like there's 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 all of this complication, and and we intentionally didn't want to engage with with the video because we wanted to have we have this frame of reference, right, in which you you can look at it objectively right like from a third person perspective that's the, that's the better way to describe that right where, where you you're disengaged from participation in the thing and, and then I'd, I'd invite you to to watch it on on your own and, and and maybe leave leave your interpretations and things that we left out in the comments um we, mm -hmm. we're gonna put the the link in the description and uh yeah like um yeah try try to to be aware of 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 this manipulation and how it's affecting you and and the purpose of this video is 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 not so much to bash on 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 this video but it's more to afford you the opportunity to see these things uh manifesting when when you engage with them and and allowing you to to have sense making that that allows you to have right relationship to, to what's presented. Well said, Manuel. Yeah, we're trying to provide you a framing so that when you watch the video, uh, you will, instead of, say, falling prey to some of the enchantment, you will get a master class on manipulation, um, on maybe intentional and unintentional forms of manipulation that are all around you. And this video is just such a stark, um, example of so many things that are wrong uh, with what people are doing, right? And, and wrong may be incomplete. Like maybe they don't realize, oh, you have to be a leader if you create a structure, because otherwise if you're creating a structure and you're not leading it, somebody will lead it and it will corrupt. And then that will be your fault because you created the structure or at least partly your fault, right? And so you can't get around the responsibility for that, no matter what you may say or, or think. Right. You can't you have to take your own ideas seriously if you're going to put them out in the world and you have to foster them and care for them, not alone. Right. Because that's bad. You need collective sense making. You need this distributed cognition. You need this collective intelligence to do this correctly. Um, and hopefully having the two of us go over this and, and work for, you know, literally hours <laughs> taking notes on this video will help you so that when you watch, it, you can notice, pay attention to how it makes you feel. Right. Uh, do do some relaxation before you watch the video and start to get in touch with what you're feeling in the moment and try to remain as as, as well as you can detached. I mean, we're meditators, so maybe we're a little bit better at that. Hopefully, hopefully uh, but you don't need to meditate to be good at it. Uh, and, and you don't need to meditate to notice like really strong emotions. And if you're not feeling really strong emotions watching the video, that may be good because maybe you're immune to this sort of enchantment, good for you. Um, but if you are, uh, you know, you can you can at least be aware of them and see what that does to you in terms of your thinking and whether or not it narrows your thinking or uh, you know, reciprocal narrowing, addiction, roughly speaking, or whether it broadens your thinking, reciprocal opening, right? And, and opens you up to uh, possibility and potential and how it affects your idea of agency. 
Any right. uh, anything else here, Manuel? Yeah. So there's this 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 idea, right? Like you create something, so you put a spirit into the world, right? And I, I think mm. that's the right right way to think about it, right? So so if you're not at the head of the spirit, and that spirit gains enough momentum right like damn that spirit is gonna do things right and and you're at the point of origination right like so you're responsible for that that is happening right? and then if you're watching the video right like what is the spirit that's being invoked by this by this video right like is is there a way that i can understand not so much what's being said but what is being invoked by what's presented to me right and then maybe start focusing your sense making on that aspect right because that's that's the thing that that the creator is creating it for right so so, so the message within what is being presented to you might not be the same message that the author is trying to convey to you and then when you don't have a relationship with the message of the author like that message of the author is going to have a relationship with you. And then, yeah, you get into places you don't want to be. Well said, well said. All right. On that note, I think, yeah, watch the video. We'll have a link in the description, right? I'll, I'll put a card here too and see what you feel. Uh, be careful and realize what's going on and that this isn't the only video doing this or things like this or pieces of this. And it's not the only group out there pushing these ideas or very similar ideas. They may sound different, they have different names uh, and, and it'll give you something to look out for. And, and hopefully that will help you to avoid uh, certain forms of enchantment and narrative capture. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, and hopefully you found this, uh, this uh, uh, commentary and breakdown uh, helpful and absolutely let us know, you know, in the comments, uh, if you have any suggestions or ideas, or you notice something that we didn't, because I'm sure there's way more there than we could cover. And uh, yeah, have a have a great day. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. And thanks, Mark. Thanks, Manuel. Always a pleasure.